Hey guys, welcome back, it's Maverick here with another episode of Violet Evergarden. So, continuing on from episode 10, which I can totally see why lots and lots of people love and praise. Uh, in fact, many are saying that it's the greatest episode out of the entire series, which, you know, I can totally see why people would, would say that. It is definitely a great episode, but we still got three more episodes, right? So let's reserve that judgment for later. And honestly, there's still quite a lot of stuff, even though... Violet herself seems to have gotten out of her past, you know, moving forward and all that good stuff. There's still a lot of unknowns, right? And I'm curious to see where exactly the story is going to go. Um, and, you know, on the top of my mind, some things that are still unresolved includes, um, you know, Gilbert's brother. Um, what's he called again? Diafred or something like that, right? You know, we, we still got that entire situation with him. I don't know if Violet's going to ever confront him uh, in some way, shape, or form sometime. Um, in regards to employees, uh, you know, from, from the doll service and whatnot, you know, there, we, I could see some things continuing on with Erica, or, um, what's that dude called, uh, Benedict, I think? Yeah, Benedict. And then, of course, uh, there's also the Evergarden family. Violet is using the Evergarden name, after all, but, you no, know, so far we haven't really seen her interact much with the Evergarden family outside of that very first one or two episodes. So, uh, let's just get into the episode and see where the story continues. Alright, let's begin in 3, 2, 1, play. Mm -hmm. Former enemies. Ah, s yeah, and we still got this storyline right back in episode eight, I think. Right, where there were still some high tensions and whatnot. And Violet's like, I'll go! <laughs> and there she goes. <laughs> Oh. Opening first, I guess. Huh. You know, all things considered, Violet might be the best person to send there, right? Considering that... Hmm. Actually, it's hard to say. At first, I was gonna say that she can more easily uh, emphasize with the soldiers and whatnot. But now that I think about it, it's going to kind of be a discovering process for herself as well, right? I highly doubt that she thought of anything while she was being a soldier. But that's probably why she's going. Right, more character development. <laughs> and also the fact that she can probably take care of herself, right? Um, and not get herself killed. I wonder if there are alternate universe versions of Violet Evergarden, like where they created a franchise where you know, there's alternate possibilities for this. Hmm. <laughs> 
I literally have to go for <laughs> Damn. Hmm. Yeah, literal battlefield. <laughs> Is Violet just gonna go solo it? Like seriously, if yeah, if a beautiful girl like Violet just came up and said, "Take me to the battlefield, drop me in," you probably feel like you know which rich lady's girl, uh, you know which rich girl, rich family girl did this last come from? You know, I can't even speak properly right now. But I guess all is well. That was sudden. Ah. Oof, artillery as well. Damn.
Yeah. I think he's dead. <sighs> You know, there's a very high possibility that the airplane would be shot at as well. She's just gonna jump out. And just happens to be this guy. <laughs> How the hell can you recognize him, Violet? <laughs> oh, this brings a whole new meaning to, like, wherever our clients request us, we will go here. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, this guy isn't going to survive, is he? She can do that. Oh, my God. Oh, 
Yeah, lots of internal bleeding. I don't think this is uh, yeah, what, uh, I don't really think that's appropriate as a letter but of course Violet's not going to say that right I love you. Morning comes. <laughs> I'm 
人生の何かを大切大切にしたそれがなきゃ一番の大切それだったんですよそうですねそうですねそれでいつ帰ってくるの5月の末に協力手紙を Delivering the letter How the hell is she going to? You know. <laughs> Honestly, the part with parents actually probably affects me a bit more than that of love. Dang. Alright, I'll see you guys after this. Oh man, this episode actually got me. Uh, in fact, a lot more than the last episode did. Which, you know, funny how things kind of work out sometimes. But we all have our different perspective and, um, you know, different viewpoints in life, right? Last episode, to be honest... Well, you know, it wasn't, it was sad, right? I, and I certainly did shed a few tears as well. But, um, you know, through it all, I feel like since I already knew what was going to happen, you know, the, the, the letters all the way till you've grown up, and the fact that, you know, we see that the little girl did grow up, you know, splendidly, lived a, lived a happy life, got married, and had a child of her own, and presumably lived a long, happy life, right? So, Honestly, it was a lot more, um, you know, it, it felt like uh, we could we could safely say that she was left in good hands, right? She should continue to, to grow up and um, enjoyed a good life. And, and that's really all that you can ask for. You know, we, we do say that this is a generational thing, you know, from parents to child, from child to child, and, and so on and so forth. And as long as your child continues to survive on, you know, everything's going to be okay at the end, right? You know, that's how, that's how we as a living species actually act. In this case, however, you know, considering, and I think part of it also go, is also because, like, you know, I'm a guy, I, I'm a son, my, you know, I have my parents as well, who are also at around the same age, right, at the age of retirement, um, and, you know, at this point in life, all I want is for my parents to live, um, you know, a happy remainder of their life, enjoy their retirement, etc., etc., right, and, um, you know, in this case, where he's literally the only son, Aiden is literally the only son, and for them to lose their child at this point in life, like, that, that's gotta hurt, right? That's gotta hurt. Um, especially at, at this age where, you know, it's pretty impractical or if not impossible for them to have another child or whatnot. So, you know, there's a saying that a child, um, uh, a parent should never be a, should never be, um, be attending the funeral of their child and, and whatnot. And, 
you know, that that definitely got me a lot more. Like, even, like, Maria, the, you know, the, the love interest, the childhood friend, honestly, even though this might sound heartless, I didn't even really care that much about that perspective. I, what I really cared was about the parents, actually. And, you know, you might wonder, hey, Maverick, but, um, you know, think back to, what was it, episode 7, right? You know, the, the artist, the guy who, who lost both his wife and his child, you know, that's definitely also... You know, a very sad situation as well, but I do feel like it's kind of different in a way because, for one thing, that that already happened in the past, right? That that wasn't an uh, happening right now kind of situation here. And another thing is that you know, at the end of the day, it it was due to illness, right? This is due to uncontrollable factors. If you're a person of faith, you know, you might say you know, due to an act of God, right? Something like of that sort. And yet, for this situation right here, you know, considering that they just survived the war right they already survived the war it's peacetime now and for him to be to be killed in a situation where you know literally it's you're so lucky to be able to survive the war and yet now that peace is broken out you you get killed over something like this like a civil war and and not even really a civil war yet just an insurgency you know that's like you know that that's just that's just sucky all around right so um to me honestly that that was this was, you know, in many ways more impactful to me than episode 10 was. Um, but, you know, it just goes to show, right? Different people have different perspectives. And, um, yeah, <laughs> that's that's all I can say about, about this particular situation, right? Which is, which is kind of also ironic in its own way, especially because the first half of this episode, I was mostly, uh, you know, I was mostly, um, you know, verging on... There was definitely a lot of suspension of disbelief going on in the first half of the episode, right? Where we have, you know, Violet you know, traveling all the way up to some, some, some other country, so the battlefield, just in order to write a letter, you know, m managing to grab a ride, um, you know, in an airplane, no less, and perishing down right in front, right in the midst of a battlefield, and managing to find that guy, fighting off all the other soldiers, and, you know, by the way, I, I was quite conflicted during that point as well because on one hand, you know, there there were multiple things going on, right? On one hand, I was like, "Holy shit, this is this is like so, um, incre uh, how can I say it? Incredible to the point of like, you know, you really have to um have a high suspension of disbelief to to you know be able to continue on to the story. And on the second on the second level, you also feel like, "Holy shit, Violet is awesome, right? I mean, like like come on that." You can't look at that scene and be like, wow, that, that was so cool. And yet, at the same, thinking of this at the same time, you're also kind of feeling guilty to yourself as well, because clearly, this particular anime, this particular series, is, you know, talking about the horrors of war, right? And the tragedy that, that is left for those who are affected by war, um, and, and so on and so forth, right? So, it's definitely not meant to glorify or or combat or whatnot. And yet, you know, you have this conflicting, at least for me anyways, I had this conflicting feeling because, you know, it's kind of like the, the alternate universe thing that I was talking about um, earlier on. Like, you know, in, in the back of my mind, I was like, holy shit, I do, you know, um, what if there was actually an alternate scenario where Violet actually continued to remain um, in the army, Gilbert never died, and, you know, uh, Violet was still continuing to, to be in the army and continuing to do all this stuff, but gradually, gradually learning from Gilbert about, you know, the, the extent of what she's actually doing and, you know, for, for that kind of alternate version instead. Um, and then we can get some, some really cool, um, action scenes as well as the gradual development of Violet's character. You know, I couldn't help but think about that in the back of my head for that particular scenario. And I, I'm curious if you guys also thought about that as well, because I can't be the only one who looked at that scene and, and went like, holy shit, Violet is a badass, right? Um, even though this kind of goes against, again, the philosophy that this, um, Oh, I guess not even philosophy, but but the main point that the series is trying to to bring out here, or or the stance that it's trying to bring out. Um, uh, where was I again? So yeah, but basically what it, <laughs> what it boils down to is yeah, this this episode actually you know out of nowhere actually caught me off guard and um you know in fact gave me more emotional impact I feel than episode ten actually did, and yet it managed to do so in even less time right because the first half of it I was actually thinking about tons of other stuff instead, but just goes to show right um you know that that this is this is the uh 
no, that's I guess that is the mark of a well well made series. Considering that many people, uh, some of you guys have already said before, you know, one of the things that the series does very well is be able to uh, bring out a lot of impact, even though it's using very very little time, right? But still, I, I still have to say, right? I would obviously still prefer for the you know for the episodes to be to be longer, for for there to be more episodes, for the story to be drawn out a little bit, just to build up on the characters a little bit more. Um, but, um, yeah, that's basically it, so, so, you know, didn't really care about Aiden, didn't really care about Maria, but it's the parents, right, the parents is the thing that, that really got me out of everything, you know, being, and Violet being there to deliver the news that their son was dead, oh, that, that's, man, um, not to mention, you know, and, and a little, I guess this is kind of like a side note or, or one, but something that also popped into my mind during that time was like, um, is Violet supposed to be one doing this thing, right? I, I guess she got special permission because typically you're supposed to receive these news from the army directly uh, and, and not through this kind of method, right? But, well, I don't know. In any case, I'm sure that as we can see at the end there, the family uh, certainly appreciated it. Maria certainly appreciated it. And also, I do hope that uh, Violet kind of you know, kind of changed the what what was being said to Maria. I certainly don't feel that Maria would want to receive a letter with someone <laughs> talking to her. Maria, I don't want to die. I don't want to die like like that. Like you don't you don't need to traumatize the poor girl. All right, um, let her. You know, it's a sad situation already. Let her continue on with her life. She's gonna eventually meet someone else. She's gonna live a happy life herself as well. And you know, that's all the best that we can hope for. But anyways, so I guess that answered the question of what the series can continue to bring. Um, with that being said, though, I do hope that we don't continue on with so many of these tearjerker moments because I do feel that at a certain point it does kind of get overboard, right? Like, come on, let's bring some positivity and um, and uh, some some good feelings for a change, right? I certainly hope so. Anyways, thank you guys, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.